Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. This is a Tower of Fantasy video, and today we're going to be looking at Lynn. How to actually play with Lynn, right? All of her mechanics, all of her synergies, the team comps, and the matrices. Everything I will cover in this video. However, before we commence, I do need to put out the caveat that this is based on test server data, and so what you see here may not be reflective of what's in the live launch. However, with that said, it should be pretty close. Let's start off with a quick summary of Lynn herself. So she is in TLDR a damage support. Depending on her start advancement, it will slightly change the way that you play not only Lin but your entire comp. The approximate star advancement where Lin and the team comp style kind of changes is about over here, when you gain weapon charge and then when you can also throw up a second moonlight realm. It's at about this point where it starts feeling a lot more like a quick swap comp because of the constant discharges. However, I would say that like your play style in terms of your whole team comp, your Saki A1 is going to be more of a game changer. So on the CN version, Version, she is very much touted as like the you must pour everything all of your resources into her You must get her to a6. However on global, especially with some of these um not as effective effects. I think that the best way to describe her in our global meta is that she is good. She is still very, very good despite, I know a lot of you gonna be like, oh man, all of these nerfs and stuff, she's actually still incredibly good. And I think what you'll find, especially you A6 enjoyers, is that Lin is probably gonna be doing the majority of your damage, which is a little bit crazy. And so onto her skill set itself. This is the normal chain, and if I remember correctly, the skill values are actually untouched. Same thing can be said with the aerial chain in which it's essentially a whole bunch of balls. So the A1 advancement makes it so that the balls do this AOE kind of swell thing, but at A0, which is probably what I'm going to be getting, you're not going to get the AOE attack, you're just simply going to be getting a single target damage with the normal attack. So whilst I'm here and whilst I've got a cat getting attacked in that AOE circle, I do want to quickly talk about like one alternative string, which is attack, attack, hold, which drops that massive flower and then I can drop a persistent kind of flower thing so as you can see this thing is flying out you can actually trigger that by using hold so one two three similar to na skill and it comes out however the shortcut to it is that one two hold drops that flower and then click again and you can get this one which is the third stage now this chain that i just showed you i believe that it actually has faster charging than your normal attack chain so if i just stood still and i just did this then i think that the results was that i would get one full bar of charge in about 13 seconds from doing the normal attack chain same amount of time for the aerial chain however with the chain that i just showed you so one two hold drop that flower and then this one over here this one actually charges up my entire bar in 10 seconds however the reality is is that this one is really really immobile and so you kind of really only want to be doing this when you're sure that you can get that flower off otherwise generally speaking your normal attack is going to be your go-to or your aerial attack both of them charge at about the same rate and so they also do about the same amount of damage per second the dodge attack actually has really nice utility and the reason is because if i throw that down you'll see that there is a a massive field that is put onto the ground. For five seconds, these enemies that are within that field are slowed down movement speed 50%. And so before we go into her skill, let's go over and have a look at her weapon mastery because it's actually a really interesting concept. Before we get there, I do want to show you guys Shatter, Charge, Untouched, 11.5, and you can really feel it. You can feel both the Charge and the Shatter, which is really, really nice. And so the first thing I wanted to show you guys was the altered damage over here. And this is kind of like your equivalent to Grievous on Claw or other physical units. TLDR is that when your weapon charge is full, you leave a mark. This mark is going to stack as you do more damage and after five seconds, it blows up. So I'm going to show you guys exactly what that looks like. And so usually at about this state of your weapon charge, you want to be switching over to Lin. And then you're going to go whack, whack, whack. I'm going to get the charge. And as you can see, there is that altered symbol over there. I'm going to hit it a few times. But what you're going to see is you're going to see a pop over there. 10, 0, oh wait, 1, 0, 5, 4, 4. And that was the pop from the mark. Now, the reason you want to use that over the other ones is especially because of other things like a uh, Frigg's one causes 151% of attack. Eh, this guy, Ice Shell, unfortunately has a way lower cap than your Lin over here, which is 560 of your total attack. And so Lin's elemental resonance is weapons master 
monster. So essentially you're going to see a bunch of epiphyllums be blooming around the place. They're essentially those giant ass flowers. In the CN version, they are referred to as the night blooms. And so if you guys don't know what that looks like, essentially I'm going to drop the field and there are going to be a whole bunch of flowers running around. So you can see that they are homing in and attacking the target. However, that is an A3 specific trait. So you're not going to get that at A0, A1 or A2. It's for this homing reason that makes A3 so freaking good because without it, as you can imagine, the flowers are going to spawn around him, but they're not actually going to go in and attack him, right? And so any flowers that are spawned, it's kind of like a probability of hitting. It's not 100% hitting. However, with A3, all of your flowers are going to home in and hit. Next, let's talk about her weapon skill, which is Moonlight Realm. I just showed you guys, it was the field that I put down. So when you use this field, it lasts for 15 seconds and your attack in the realm is increased by 9%. Now, this is a little bit different from the CN version in which it was damage and 10%, but I think that it is an appropriate nerf, especially uh, with how I've been playtesting Lin. She is still an insane powerhouse, even despite like a lot of her stats actually getting cut in half. She also has her jumping ability increased by 20% and endurance consumption reduced by 50%. Now, that is probably the most important one, this endurance reduction, because I want to show you guys. I'm going to come over and uh, find a Samir. And so if you guys pay attention to the endurance consumption of my Samir, so that is using just without Moonlight Realm, that is a lot of endurance consumption, right? However, after I put down the field and I go into the Samir jump, watch the endurance consumption. It is like half of it. Well, I mean, yeah, that's exactly what they said in the tooltip. But you can essentially be a ceiling fan for a lot longer. And so considering that the ceiling fan form of Samir is her preferred DPS, it is the highest DPS of her character, you're going to be getting a lot more uptime and therefore more damage. And so the next thing about the field is the fact that when you actually jump up within the field, you are floating a little bit. And to get around, you essentially can dodge or you can use spacebar. I use spacebar, so you can see the spacebar is actually a little bit different to the dodge. Uh, this one is a dodge, so you can see it's consuming my dodge gauge. However, using the spacebar is not consuming my dodge gauge at all. Personally, I've still not found like the utility from that one. And honestly, it kind of feels like a DPS loss. And so continuing on with this Yu-Gi-Oh level description, we've got the next one, which is that in the Moonlight Realm, we'll get the flower spawning every 0.8 seconds with your A3 or A5 or A6 or whatever. It goes down to like 0 0.5, 0 0.3 seconds, which makes it really, really freaking good in terms of damage support. On the other hand, we've got two Shadow Weave exclusive passives whilst in the realm. So the floating one was also actually a Shadow Weave exclusive, Shadow Weave being her weapon. So you have to be in the weapon to access this. But when you use Shadow Weave in Moonlight Realm, an extra 50% of damage is dealt to enemies with less than 20% HP. And so that's just simply free damage for when you switch into Lin. It doesn't mean that you use Lin as a main DPS kind of thing. I mean, it kind of does when they are under 20% HP. But the interesting one that I did want to focus on is this one over here. When you use Shadow Weave in Moonlight Realm, you will blink away from the target when incoming damage is detected. What that means is that you have essentially an automatic dodge every 10 seconds. However, a lot of people, especially from the CN versions, are like, this is uh, sometimes what gets you killed. Because unfortunately, you cannot actually control this one over here. And so you may end up in a pretty bad spot and get one shot. And so here is the part that I've been dreading because it is so freaking long. It's the Weapon Master. It is essentially the, oh, what are your other weapons? Let me give you a buff. And so starting off with the Flame Weapons Master, with two Flame Weapons, essentially you get more burning. So for example, if you're like a Ruby or your Cobalt A5, A6, or with the Matrices, whatever, they inflict burning on the target, that burning will last an extra four seconds. So for example, if your Cobalt was normally going to do 100% damage per tick per second, then that means that this is going to actually add an extra 400% damage. And on top of that, you deal extra flame damage to targets with shields. So yeah, generally speaking, to take advantage of this, you're going to be using characters like Ruby, a Cobalt A5 slash A6. You've got your King. I think most people who are serious about running the flame comp will be running like the Ruby, the Cobalt A6, as well as the Lin. And so next we have Vault Weapons Master in which we get a 65% chance of not consuming a dodge charge when we actually go ahead and dodge. And so let me just show you that real quick. And so I'm gonna lay down the Moonlight Realm. You can see that there is a purple aura denoting the Vault Affinity. I'm gonna to switch to Samir, I'm gonna dodge. And you can see that the dodge charges are actually not being consumed. Well, a 65% chance of being refunded, which is actually pretty high, like look at that go. The next effect from the Vault Weapon Master is that you get a 5% boost to dodge attack damage and so what that is is essentially that right dodge attack attack like that so for nemesis for the current meta actually 
your crow and your Samir dodge attacks are absolutely dog water. Do not do them. However, the forward or directional dodge attack with your nemesis, this one is actually relatively strong. However, even then, I probably wouldn't do that. So what I'm saying is that this bad boy gets plus 5% damage. However, it is quite clear that both of these effects are actually balanced around some of the future characters. I know that we can't really take advantage of them right now with our Samir as well as our Crow Nemesis to an extent, but it's really when Tian comes along that we can really, really utilize this. And then last of all, we have the Vault Damage being boosted by an extra 10%. Next, we've got the Frost Weapons Master in which essentially equip two Frost Weapons, get 10% Frost Attack. I know that a lot of people are gonna be Doom posting about this one saying, oh man, Lin's not worth it for the Frost team. And to an extent, you're kind of correct. I would say that the value of Lin is a lot lower than she was before. However, there are a few things that we do need to note. And the first thing is that there is no condition to this. You equip two Frost Weapons, you get free frost attack. Whereas previously, we had to actually build up stacks to achieve frostbite, and only when we get frostbite do we actually gain access to that frost damage effect. On the other hand, the frost attack effect with plus 10%, it does sound really, really meager, especially when you compare it to the likes of your Zubasa A6, which gives 25% attack, as well as your Claudia C1, which gives 24% damage. And I mean, I'm kind of right. And so if you think about it like that, yes, Zubasa and Claudia are actually quite competitive, making it so that you don't have to get Lin. I think that Frost is in a very, very good place. However, what Lin does offer is on top of this Frost attack, she has those exploding flowers, this one over here. She also has a lot of utility in which for the dodge, she has the green field that we talked about. She also has this passive that I didn't talk about in which she is able to immediately break control if under control effects. So if you're slowed down, then you can do the dodge Dodge, and you can immediately release the leafy green and get out of it. And probably the most important one for me, which is the discharge in which she actually gets a massive suck like this one right here. And so to summarize all of that, if you are a frost enjoyer, I would say that you could get away with skipping Lin. However, as like an overall game enjoyer, like a tower of fantasy enjoyer, I would still highly recommend pulling on Lin because of the synergies she has with all of the other teams. I think that Lin still definitely has a lot of value to be pulled. And so following that, what we have is the physical weapons master in which there also was a conditional on the CN version in which you needed a shield to actually trigger this. However, this is essentially just free damage. So whilst in the Moonlight Realm, deal damage. So I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like. I'm going to lay down the Moonlight Realm and you're going to see some physical damage pop up. That one right there. There really is not much else that I can say about it. It is just free damage ticking every second. In terms of the physical team comp, we've got the Shiddor, we've got the Claudia, and we've got the Lin. This is essentially going to be your best in slot for physical for quite a long time until Lyra, which is probably going to be about like two months away. Generally speaking, you're going to be main DPSing with the Shiddor over here. You're going to be swapping in C1 Claudia, get that damage buff, and then you're going to be doing a whole bunch of off-field damage support with the Lin. And so that's going to bring us to the last Weapons Master balance, in which if you equip any two different elemental weapons, you just straight up get 15% attack. And so this is really interesting because especially for the newer players or for the players who missed out on some of the characters they wanted, for example, the Frig or the Claudia, you could actually run something that is more looking like a version 1.0 kind of comp. So for example, maybe you have like a C1 or a C3 Samir, and then you could actually use a shield breaker in the form of Sark because she is fantastic and is on at the time of this video and then use Lin to kind of give that resonance that bootleg resonance for the comp that you kind of just make shifted together. For a comp like this I do think that it is going to outshine like your Tsubasa as well as your Claudia and so for beginners and for those of you who don't have like all of the characters I would highly recommend Lin. All right so we finally got through all of that the last one is the discharge over here this one's pretty exciting because it is just a big suck and if I drop it down this is what it looks like so it's just going to be a giant black hole in the center with some flowers around it. Uh, the thing about this one is that it does 540% damage in total. And so if you compare that, for example, with your main DPSs, such as your Frig, this one's 618. I believe the Samir goes up to like 600, 700%. Then it doesn't sound too good on paper. In terms of the iframe, so it does actually have an iframe on it. As you can see, damage immunity lasts 1.5 seconds. The iframe of the Saki one is actually a lot longer, the Saki Discharge. However, where Lin's Discharge is really, really good is for grouping mobs. And obviously there is only one cactus over here. However, if there were a lot of cactuses and I drop this bad boy down, then all the cactuses would be swarming towards the middle. But again, in a boss scenario, you wanna be using your DPS discharges. All right, we finally made it out of skill description hell. Let's move on to 
the star advancements in which it's going to be relatively quick because the TLDR is as you get more stars, you get more off-field damage. And Zero Stars with no advancements, she is essentially your off-field DPS queen with a lot of utility. You've got the weapon slow on dodge, you've got the suck on the discharge, you've got the off-field damage from the flowers. At A1, the TLDR is that you get more damage via your flowers. So you're going to be able to stack up to extra 50% damage and the generation rate, the interval is actually reduced from 0.8 down to 0.5. For A3, I think that this is probably the most important one because those epiphalums actually attach to the enemy. So they are becoming homing. On top of that, the generation interval is lower to 0.3. So there are going to be a lot of those flowers coming in and the duration, the uptime of the realm is going to be boosted to 20 seconds. So if you remember the its cooldown is on 30 seconds and it's going from 15 to 20 seconds that means you're going to be going from 50% uptime up to 66% uptime that's why I say A3 is probably kind of like the sweet spot if you are like saving a lot for her now from here on out the A5 and the A6 like I mentioned before it makes her feel a lot more like a quick swap comp because of the gaining 30 weapon charge every second and on top of that you also increase the damage of discharge skills but yeah it's at about this point where it starts feeling like oh you're getting discharge here you're getting discharge there you're getting discharge everywhere and so your DPS is going to be increased quite substantially however it's the charging that's going to make you feel like a quick swap comp now moving on to the six star over here you get to put down two fields essentially and in some situations like with the Saki reset you can actually put down three and so one of the ways that you can lay down three fields is that if you have three charges on the heart stream reset and you have two charges on the a6 lin you can lay down a field lay down another field and lay down another field. So as you can see, there are three borders, one over here, one over here, and one over here. There are indeed three fields. And so as you can see, it is going absolutely nuts in there. And so next, I wanted to talk about Lin's matrices. These are interesting because first of all, they got nerfed like into the ground. By nerfed, I mean like they got changed, it's got balanced. I think it is appropriate for global. At a maximum of five stacks with the two piece set, you will gain up to 9.5% attack with just the zero star version. And with the four piece set effect, what you do is you have to move around in the Moonlight Realm and you will get up to 10% uh, 0.2% damage. However, this set effect actually works even if it's equipped on a weapon that is on the offhand. So if it's on a Lin fan and you're not on the Lin fan, then this is still going to work as you're moving through the Moonlight Realm. The same cannot be said about the first one over here. So you have to actually periodically switch back into the Lin fan, which you will do anyway to re-trigger this buff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this field down first. I'm going to switch weapon and then you can see uh, my buffs coming up. This one over here, stack up the final damage. I'm going to move again. And you can see that three is getting refreshed. And so that demonstrates the four piece effect. Now I'm going to switch back over to Lin's weapon. And so as you can see, this one over here, I can stack up to five times and you can see it refreshing every time I attack with Lin. However, the moment I switch out of it, uh, the five times one, yep, it's going down. So you can see that the counter is going down. It's not being refreshed. And uh, well, yeah, that's exactly what it says in the skill description. Just remember that, that's all. In terms of Lin's Awakening, it's good. It's actually really good because it's essentially saying your off-field damage is going to be doing more damage, but you're also going to be reducing the resistance or resistance of the mob that you're hitting. And the reason that I compare this one to Samir is because this one is essentially boosting Lin's off-field damage. Samir's is boosting your total damage of your total team by 20%. I think that even without doing the calculations, the total team damage with the Samir is going to win out against this one unless your Lin is somehow doing like 60% of your team's total damage in which then I would start considering this because it also has the reduce or resistance. So TLDR, it's good, yes, but I would still probably run Samir over this. And so to summarize, Lin is worth rolling for to act as kind of like the damage support for all slots in all teams from now and into the future. The only one where it's a little bit iffy is again this Frost team over here, where an A0 Lin I think could be outperformed by like a A3, A6 Tsubasa or a Claudia C1. However, I do think that Lin still has, certainly has a lot of utility to make up for that weakness. The fact that she can work with every single team, although she may not be BIS for some of them, makes her extremely, extremely valuable. And so to really conclude the should you roll for Lin, I think it's pretty obvious by now that you should roll for Lin. However, what I do want you to keep in mind is that you don't have to go for the A3, for the A6, or even the A1 right now. There is probably strong possibility, <laughs> what a what a freaking sentence, that she will be rerun in the near future. However, do remember that she is a limited limited, and what I mean by that is that she does not get added to the standard pool at all. And so my guys, let me know down in the comments below how far are you going to roll for Lin or if you're actually going to roll for Lin at all. 
personally, I'll probably go for the A0, and if I get unlucky, I get to like 80 pulls or something, win the 50-50, maybe I'll go for the A1. But guys, I think this video has gone on long enough already, and so you guys already know what to do, blah, 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 blah. goodbye.